You got to learn to go backwards in time to get the understanding and then come forward to the present and bring that understanding with you. Hello, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Rebel. Welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune broadcast number 248. As you're logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so throughout the broadcast. If you're catching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell over there. If you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, please visit jkdrebel.com, click on the Rebel Gear link, and that's where you will see stuff like this, the four tenets of uh, Jeet Kune Do t-shirt, um, long sleeve, short sleeve, uh, sweatshirt, hoodie, coffee mug, all that good stuff. But of course, the best thing you can do is to spread the word about the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcasts by sharing this video. All right. Um, so they just switched something on me there, threw me off a little bit. Okay. So here's what I was told. You must try to think the thought, the thinker thought, when he thought the thought, right? So what am I talking about? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. It's a way to get a better understanding of what might have been, and you can use this for anything, but we use it for Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do. So it's a way to get a better understanding of what might have been going through Bruce Lee's mind um, when he said what he said or wrote what he wrote um as well as in in the time period um in during his lifetime and then and then when when it was subject to examination uh in the time period that's oxymoronic isn't it in the period after his premature death so Here's what I mean. If you're going to debate or discuss a Jeet Kune Do issue with someone, in all fairness, you should try to put whatever point you're making, if it's appropriate, into its um, correct historical context, which is a phrase that I love to use. One reason I say this is because many people do not realize that that which grew into Jeet Kune Do, that which grew to become the Jeet Kune Do, let's say of the 1980s and thereafter, was not at all the Jeet Kune Do of the late 1960s up to, let's call it, the mid to late 1970s. So original, and I'm using it in its correct um, uh, uh, meaning, original Jeet Kune Do was a backyard, almost a closed door thing. A bunch of guys getting together to work on what worked for them. Yes, there was a touch of celebrity associated with it because it's the art, it's the approach founded by Bruce Lee, the well-known actor and, you know, and subsequent movie star and what have you. And so yes, Black Belt Magazine, for example, did come by the Chinatown School um, to do a pictorial essay and what have you. So in the years after Bruce Lee left for Hong Kong, and then, like I mentioned before, after his unfortunate passing, JKD still re re remained essentially a small group activity. When Dan Inasano and Richard Bastillo opened up the Jun Fan Gung Fu and Filipino Kali Academy in 1974, what became the Jeet Kune Do class was still small group, closed door, and open only for a select number of students. So in those circumstances, under those kinds of conditions, you could say certain things and you could make certain remarks that would be understood by that inner circle. And if they weren't understood, then in that small group setting, 
you could you could sit down or sit around and discuss it more deeply. Um, so you could say something like, well, in kicking range or in punching range, this and this and this, because it's immediately visible in the present in that present time what you mean because everybody's there with you you could even go so far in that in a circle setting to be critical of other martial arts systems now when you start teaching a greater number of people um people most of whom have been clamoring for information about bruce lee's art and so you're trying to respond to that request while staying true somewhat idealistically to JKD's value system, then you might make an error if you say the same things that you were saying to the little group, because it's no longer that little intimate group setting. So the things that you say in that group that you work with, you know, week in, week out, um, that doesn't translate as readily as with people that you might see once or twice a year. And so you say it to them and it can end up being misinterpreted. And then if they go off and repeat it, it can end up being reinterpreted as something completely different. Um, I, I talked about being critical of other arts in the small group, right? You're working in Jeet Kune Do, so obviously you have an appreciation for different martial arts. Um, you have an appreciation for what different martial arts have to offer, but you can also be critical. You can talk about what, what they don't offer that you're in search of, but try doing that in public and um, you just might develop a reputation that ultimately you might not enjoy, right? Um, and if you do that long enough in that public setting, you might enjoy um, a public visit to your seminar from representatives of that art, if you know what I mean, right? So please, when you talk about Jeet Kune Do nowadays, think about what it is that you're trying to say, okay? So take, for example, saying that Bruce Lee is in some form or fashion um, responsible or a con or contributed to the birth of mixed martial arts in America. Now, on the surface, that makes sense. If you believe that Bruce Lee was all about mixing the best techniques from different martial arts to create Jeet Kune Do. So if Bruce Lee, the well-known, the famous martial artist, greatest martial artist of all time, if he was into mixing techniques from different styles to create Jeet Kune Do. Well, yeah, then that sounds like mixed martial arts. So yeah, he's the father, godfather, grandfather, stepfather, whatever of MMA. Additionally, if you go down the tack of what well, Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do was about realistic training and MMA is almost as real as it gets. I'm not going to get into the sport versus self-defense, whatever, right? But Bruce Lee was about realistic training. MMA is about realistic training. So once again, here now, Bruce Lee becomes an originator of MMA or what have you. We could, if we're being generous, we could call both of these good questions. But a problem with both of them is that they don't take Bruce Lee's own mindset into consideration, right? When these topics are broached. So when people have this discussion, ultimately they end up projecting their own wishes or their own opinions onto Bruce Lee. A guy who at the time did not look favorably on martial arts competitions, but based on where his head was at, the safest thing to say, is that he might have approved of MMA, but we don't know, so we shouldn't talk as if we do, okay? So that's how you stay present when you talk about martial art or about Jeet Kune Do, and that's how you avoid presentism in talking about Jeet Kune Do. All right, so I wanna tell you a little story and give you a little, um, uh, a subtopic, let's call it, right? Um, 
because it, it falls in line with, with what we're doing. So quick story. Um, my Wednesday morning client, Amy, we'll call her Amy, right? She shows up late this morning and um, I had a new pair of boxing gloves for her so that we were to, to, to break in. So in order to punish her for showing up late, we gloved up and we went straight into glove drilling, right? And so it, during the course of the, during the course of the class, um, we we got into a thing about um, what uh, how to describe Jeet Kune Do to people, right? So I guess she she's had questions from friends or family members or or whatever, and I said to her, well, based on who they are, you could you could just say to them that it's a kung fu style invented by Bruce Lee, right? She goes, yeah, I could do that. And they would probably be happy with that, but it's not really true, is it? Right? And I, and I said, so of course it's not really true. But sometimes when people ask stuff like that, right? Because for a lot of people, the study of martial art, the practice of martial art is still like an esoteric thing, right? And so there are people out there who ask you about your martial art practice because they just want to be sure that you're not smarter than them in some way, that you're not involved in something that might give you an edge over them or what have you. So if you say to somebody like that, oh, it's a Kung Fu style invented by Bruce Lee, guess what? They will be happy with that. Why? Because they know the term Kung Fu and they have heard of Bruce Lee. So they'll be happy. Now, like I said, it isn't. So now if you're talking to somebody who is really interested, then you might have to go a little bit deeper, right? So I, I told her, I continued that that's one of the problems with Jeet Kune Do. It is very often beyond a lay person's level of understanding, which is why Bruce Lee is noted to have said something like, only one in 10,000 will get my Jeet Kune Do or what have you, right? So I said, I said to her, so look at what we did this morning. So it was all glove drilling. Now, glove drilling is a thing that you can find in Muay Thai. You can find it in Box Frances. You can find it in uh, Filipino Panantukan. The idea of, but, but here's the thing, right? The idea of using the glove drilling to warm into your training, right? To warm up into your training. That is something that I got from the late great Salem Astley and the French kickboxers. It is akin to something that Bruce Lee talks about in the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, which is that sometimes the best warm up for the activity is the performance of the activity itself. So the French kickboxers will just go nice and easy, but they're doing the actual techniques as the warm up. Right. And then as the body warms up or whatever, you can go faster, you can go harder, you can start kicking higher or whatever, whatever. Right. But we weren't using box front says techniques per se. We were using Western boxing techniques. But the idea of what we were doing comes from French kickboxing. Um, we also used the three count exchange drill that is affectionately known by many of us as the jab drill, which comes from Filipino Kali, comes from the Filipino boxing. So imagine trying to explain all of that to someone who asked you about what types of training you do. And it's somebody who's not that, who's really not that interested in what you're doing. But look at how long it took me to explain that to you in explaining to her. That's a problem with Jeet Kune Do. Now, there are people who will hear this podcast and they'll go, oh, well, he's talking about, about style hopping. The reason why I gave Amy that history lesson is because she is someone who is interested in Jeet Kune Do. I didn't have to use any identifiers. I could just go, okay, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, glove drill, right? And then we'd go and we, do, we did what we did. We just trained. So I guess... The way those people's minds work, if I don't identify anything with my client, it's Jeet Kune Do because I'm not labeling it. But if I do attach a label to it, 
now I'm a style hopper. It's not Jeet Kune Do anymore. You see where I'm going with this, right? Anyhow, so long story short, I just explained to her what you got there is an example of the integration that exists in Jeet Kune Do, which is why sometimes I go, you know, the Jeet Kune Do just disappears. Jeet Kune Do just becomes invisible, right? Okay, all right, so that's it. Um, you guys let me know what you think uh, about my, my explanation about integration in Jeet Kune Do and then the whole thing about um, historical context when it comes to uh, talking about Jeet Kune Do. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's all I got to say about this epi this video. If you like what you heard, comment, rate, subscribe, hit the notification bell over on the YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Um, at uh, paypal.me slash unified MA Miami, the Jeet Kune Do journey, excuse me, volume one, um, still available, the raw but edited version. Um, Coming up on Friday, the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues episode, uh, a return, return visit. I think this is his third time with us. Uh, Mark Stewart, uh, the mad professor of uh, Boxer Rebellion. And um, I think we're just going to go through some of his recent epiphanies on JKD training and what have you. So that's uh, Friday the 14th at uh, 6 p.m. Today's a, a, a pastel day, so I went with the beige um uh light colored thing so that's it so i'll see some of you on friday if not i'll see you next uh wednesday for another issue of the i love jeet kundo broadcast until then this is dwight woods the jeet kundo rebel signing off you guys enjoy the rest of your evening take care talk soon